Welcome to Mad Love. We are joined by singer, entertainer, K-pop sensation, and a man who might be the most charismatic person on earth, Eric Nam, and maybe a special guest host. Hi, Eric. Hi. Welcome to Australia. Thank you. How has your time been so far? It's been good. Um, it's been overwhelming. Yeah. I've done a lot. Um, we've had a lot of fun. We had a good show in Brisbane, and now we're in Sydney, and it's been great. So I'm excited for tonight's show. Um, we're gonna take it back to the beginning for a little bit. Okay. So, you're like a multi-talented, amazing person. Me? You. Oh my god. Not me. Thank I, you. I no, wish it was me. I'm sure you are as well. I just I'm, don't know you yet. I'm trying to get uh, there. You're, you're already there. Uh, how did you initially get into the entertainment industry? Um, I guess, long story short, through YouTube. Um, through YouTube, I got picked up off a YouTube cover, and then I was put onto a TV show, kind of like, X Factor, The Voice, um, in Korea, and that's pretty much how I started my music career. Yep. And now you're here in Australia as a part of your world tour. Yeah. Um, and you're playing songs from your whole catalog. Yep. Um, what's it been like kind of playing these songs and seeing audiences around the world react to them? Um, it's, it's the coolest thing because I have, you know, I think I have a good like 50% in English, I have like about 50% in Korean. Um, but people sing along to 100% of it. So it's weird because you see people who are so diverse and you would never think that they could speak or understand Korean, but they're singing along with every word and they know the moves. And it's been, um, it's probably one of the more, like, what do you say? Like, awe-inspiring kind of moments when you see people, you know, enjoying the music. So it's been really cool. Um, because on one of your latest releases, mm -hmm. honestly, yeah. You're kind of re like reaching out into more diverse sounds. Was that kind of a thing to kind of interact with more audiences or is that something just for you? Like, where did that kind of play a part? I think it was quite honestly very selfish. Um, it was, I, I really like pop music, pop R&B. Um, and I think for a long time I've been doing music in Korea to try to fit a Korean audience um, according to whatever the label was saying or um, the producers that I was working with, but at the end of the day, I kind of realized, you know, music it needs to be authentic and true to who you are as a person and as a performer. And um, for a long time, I felt like I was putting out music that kind of fit, but the shoe was like a little too small or a little too big. Um, so I wanted to revert back into something that I felt was truly me. And now I think that was a culmination. Uh, that all culminated in the Honesty album. Yeah. Um, you're maybe our most special guest with I am. Ever. I'm so honored. Ever. And we've had a few. I'm but so honored. you might be number one. Oh my gosh. So for this special episode, yeah. we're gonna have our special guest host, okay. Michael. All right. Michael Kim kinda take over and switch out. Sweet. So awesome. just like Michael Kim. Hello. You won't you're not Korean, are you? I am Korean. What, hey, what gave it away? Maybe the cat. Yeah, oh, the cat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, nice so, to meet you, Michael. Nice to meet you. Thank you, Andy. Um, so, and thank you, Eric. I'm so happy to be here talking to you today. Likewise. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> <Mercy me. laughs> okay, so you've kind of talked about Asian representation yeah. in Western media mm -hmm. um, and maybe the lack thereof. Yeah. Um, what kind of experiences, I guess, have kind of led you to that kind of awareness? Um, I think, you know, it kind of. Looking back at it, I think it was you know, all through part of middle school, high school, college. It was a big part of my life. You know, I grew up in a very predominantly white neighborhood, um, and I remember having these moments where I was like, "Okay, so I'm Asian, I'm Korean, but I'm also American." And I remember asking my parents, "Like, where do I fit in on on the spectrum of, of people? You know, in the states because it's such a diverse place." Um, and so I think from a very young age, I was trying to fit into different circles. I have my my church Korean friends and then I have my white school friends and I was like, but what am I? Right. Um, and I think, so I had that dialogue with a lot of people from an early age and um, I had written, you know, I guess a thesis in high school about Asian portrayals in media. And at that time it was still very early. So growing up, you know, all we see is Jackie Chan or Lucy Liu and that was about it. Right. Um, and. Thank God in the past few years it's really diversified a lot more and we have a lot of great movies and TV shows and um, performers 
taking over the world. So it's been really, really cool to be able to see that and be part of that movement. Right. And I guess like the kind of insights you've had as an individual that is being brought up on like the beautiful cross-cultural axis yes. that is the East and the West. Yeah. Um, have those kinds of insights informed the kind of choices you've made in your work, whether it be who you collaborate with or the style of music? Um, I think it's always something that we have in the back of our heads, like me and my team, my team and I. Um, and I'm sure they've informed our decisions to a certain extent. Um, I don't know if there's one thing where I'm like, this is why we did it like this, but I think for, for the most part, you know, my dream and my goal is to be able to reverse engineer what I'm doing in Asia back in the States um, because there still isn't a mainstream Asian artist, sure. I feel. Like. Yeah. Um, I think there are people who are trying and they're doing great things and, um, you know, I hope that I can be one of them as well. Um, but that's kind of the end goal and so when we're looking at the collaborations or certain festivals or shows, we're just trying to figure out what makes most sense and how would we do it if we were any other American artist. Right, okay. And what would you say the importance of this kind of representation and maybe more Asian representation might be? Um, you know, I think you know, the world is such a diverse place and Asians take up a huge, huge percentage of the population of the world, but to be so underrepresented I think is very unfortunate. Right. Um, but I think people like myself, like we need to take on the challenge of trying. And we may, like, I probably won't be the person to break through and like be billboard number no. one, quite honestly. I could be maybe like number, I don't know, you guys just put a number in the comments, I don't know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, to be able to try and put forth the effort and to show people that we can sing, we can dance, we can act, right. it paves the way for future generations. So yeah. I think, you know, when I'm in the States or, you know, maybe here in Australia, one of the most rewarding comments that I get from fans is, is just, thank you. I'm like, no, like, thanks for listening to music. No, no thank you for doing what you do sure. because you encourage myself and a whole nother generation to try and endeavor and achieve for things that we never thought was possible before. Right. And that's probably one of the most rewarding aspects of what I do. Yeah, so, yeah. like presenting choices. Yeah, nice. That's it. Okay, so last question. Mm -hmm. um, so as an artist that is kind of juggling these different spheres of maybe like the Korean, Asian, kind of Western media, yeah. um, what kind of advice might you give to another kind of artist that is maybe trying to break into mainstream, even trying to make it in Korea, or like kind of this? Um, I think it's finding your own color and your own style and personality and whatever that may be um, and having that great story that people can really understand and get behind. I think for me a big part of my start was you know I was just that average Korean American, Asian American dude that right. went the perfect route of what your parents want you to do. You know I went, I went to college, I got a degree, I got the job, I had everything and then I threw it away to try something else and for a lot of people they really I think really encouraged and latched onto that story um, but and then musically I think honestly was the last album that really had a great resonance with audience members or listeners because it felt true to who I was and musically the color that I really really like and so finding that color and that story and who you are as a person um, and being able to so I can't speak English anymore being able to demonstrate that sure. uh, I think is is really cool and there's so many different avenues and ways to do it you know social media yeah. and all that kind of stuff so um, just do it and keep trying definitely yeah. I said one last question but no, you, no, no, no. you raised something interesting um, so you actually entered into the Korean music scene as more of a maybe like cognizant being you kind of had finished had a life in, in America, you had kind of done uni um, and you were going into something else yep. and you kind of entered the music scene then. Yep. Do you think it's afforded you a certain type of um, point of view maybe that maybe other Korean artists or other artists themselves that have entered from a young age haven't? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I think, you know, I'm very, I'm very thankful that I have that different perspective and a different set of knowledge and skills that other people may not have. Right. Um, I'm jealous of them because they've gone through years of training of dancing and whatever that I can never do and I probably will never do. No, which you is do. Funny. You're doing it. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's been, you know, I think it's really cool because 
I feel much more empowered to make the right decisions and the right calls in terms of my career and business decisions and all that kind of stuff where as opposed to, and because I'm a solo artist. Right. I think if you're in a group and you've been a trainee and that's all you know, you end up relying on the company or your group members a lot. Sure. So when, when that all falls off, it's kind of hard to stand alone. Um, so for that, I am very thankful and I think a lot of people in Korea also see that and so I have a lot of friends, younger friends who are always hitting me up for advice, right. business advice and whatever. And so it's, it's definitely a different perspective and I appreciate it and um, I don't think there's one right answer to how you get into music or what the career path is, but right. that's been mine and it's been great. Yeah. yeah, thank you so much. Absolutely, thank you. Thank you. Hey guys, it's Eric Nome and you're watching Mad Love on Life Without Andrew.